Yeah, you see all those little patches, dark green? That is the super wet with my herbicide in it. And that's how I know where I've sprayed. Okay, here's a disclaimer. I've been trying to make my videos as short as possible with the best version of the condensed information as possible and it's, it's actually quite difficult. This video is one of those videos. There just isn't an easy way to explain a process that isn't actually that simple, especially when you're talking about something that involves poisons or where you can actually kill grass or other plants as well. So this video is longer than I want it to be, but I think it might be worth it for some of you. Anyway, enjoy. Goeiemiddag mense, my fellow felties. This is about the sixth millionth time that I'm trying to record this little thing. So I've just decided this video is going to be stupid simple. And it's about weeds. And when we say weeds, we're talking about broadleaf weeds. There are different categories. Let's, let's call the majority of the weeds that you're used to seeing broadleaf weeds. Then you get weeds that look like grass. They're called grassy weeds. They're not so easy to kill. And then you get grasses, well, weeds that have this um, the sort of, they kind of look like grass to a certain extent, the stem that goes upright like this with some leaves on them, shiny, those little buggers with a spiky little head on the top, they're called sedges, and you get different types of those as well. So like nut sedge, also not easy to kill, they require a different range of herbicides and different practices to get rid of them. But when we talk broadleaf weeds, so let's say you've got a yard full of weeds, then this little bit of information will help you get rid of let's say 90% of them. Once you've gotten rid of the mass of the weeds in your yard, it's very easy to get the grass growing and use the grass to put pressure on the weeds. So that video that I put out a couple of weeks back on water, mow and fertilize equals a stronger turf, it still applies and it helps with weed suppression. So get rid of the big mass of weeds first, which is what we're talking about now, and then work on your lawn. Then a month or two later, you go back and you do some spot sprays and you get rid of all those difficult buggers later on. Let's talk a little bit further about what's going on in my yard. And then we'll talk about how to time when you do your weed sprays and what to use. All right, so if you look at my yard, you don't think it looks too bad. And uh, it's true. I've been cutting it really short though, Lake. And what's happened is it's meant that the oxalis issue, which I normally have down here, uh, has come back. Now I did go away for, I probably had about 10 months, maybe nine months of oxalis free lawn. So I'm just gonna have to repeat those practices and then carry on. So oxalis is this. It is this, I don't know if you can see it properly there. It looks like clover, but it's not clover and it's got a little yellow flower on it. Some of them are purple looking. Some of them uh, stand up a little bit taller. They're actually a different range of weeds and so on. And then you also get broadleaf weeds like this. Kind of look like flowers and thistle-ish looking things. This one's also been sprayed. This is the type of stuff that we can get rid of. Okay, but well what we can't get rid of are grassy weeds, which I no, long, no longer have any more of, so I can't show you those. And then here in my flower bed, this is how I started my previous nut sedge video, is I, I found some nut sedge in the bed, in the, uh, in the, in the um, bed, and then I grew them in, and I just left them here and forgot about them. And what's happened is they've now grown back in the bed, luckily not on the grass, because I eradicated them from the grass by pulling them out. But you can also just paint them with Roundup. And I actually advise, it's probably the best thing to do, is instead of pulling out just any old weed, you take a glass jar with a bit of water in it, let's say 100 mils, 30 mils of Roundup 360, that's a hell of a strong dosage. If you've got no money to buy the fancy wetting agents, then you add just a squeeze of sunlight dishwashing liquid into that mix. You mix it slowly so that you don't splash yourself, wear a mask so that you don't inhale the stuff. Then you take a paintbrush, you dip it in there and you paint, you dab it off on the sides so that you don't drip it in your lawn. And you just paint the weed itself only. It's one of the best ways to get rid of these odds and sods. Anyway, so to get rid of the oxaluses and the other broadleaf weeds, all that you need is one or the combination of three active ingredients that are common, I think, in most countries. They're old, they've been used for decades. The first is called dicamba, the second is called MCPA. I think in some parts of the world there's MCPP as well. I'm talking about MCPA and 2,4-D. The combination of those three just so happens to be in a product that I like to use called Super Lawn Weeder. 
and you can get it from various manufacturers and it is an off the shelf or over the uh, over the counter type product you can buy it at any garden center and most hardware stores that stock garden supplies very simple product to use is safe for most grass types but in all circumstances and whenever we talk about any poisons you must read the label now I've realized that everybody says read the label but it's more specific than that it, what I mean by read the label is read everything in the instructions every last bit of information don't just read the application rate you must read exactly what PPE they expect you to use because it will give you an indication of how poisonous the stuff really is um, to give you an idea sometimes in these uh, list of these sets of instructions they might say to you something along the lines of wear full PPE right then you go out and you spray when you finish spraying you undress from the PPE they tell you still to go and clean up and wash up and then even after you've still washed up they tell you do not eat drink or smoke even after that you must know that what you've just played with is serious poison it's not a toy so in all circumstances, you be extra careful with whatever it is that you're putting down. Keep your pets off of it. Like now my dog's walking around, but this is a couple of hours ago that I did this. So it's now mostly safe. I'm just gonna make sure that he doesn't walk around licking things. Of course, your kids off the grass as well. Give it four hours at least if it's a nice warm day. Uh, and that will help you a little bit there in that regard. So we've spoken now about Super Lawn Weeder, so it's Dicamba MCPA 24D that will get rid of the majority of broadleaf weeds for you. This is, I mean, there's lots to go into with weeds, so this is just going to be the basic stuff in this video. The next most important thing is how you actually go about killing these weeds, and that doesn't just mean like spraying the weeds, you've got to fully prepare for it. So that means choose a week that you know is going to be mostly dry, uh, choose a week that you also know is going to have as little wind as possible. It's not always to gauge that, but you just got to, you know, sometimes just pray and hope. And on day one, you go and you commit, you mow your lawn at a relatively short height of cut. You then wait normally about three days, not for the grass to grow, but for the weed to redevelop. So the full leaf structure is there and the weed normally has that little bit of a, an extra growth spread before the grass does first. So it ends up sticking its head up and out of the grass area or the, the, the height of cut of the rest of the grass higher than, than the actual lawn level and that makes it an easy target for you to go and spray those weeds. So on day four, after you can see that you've got a nice full weed and it's now time to spray, in the morning when the, there's no rain, the ground is not wet and there's no wind, you go out and you spray your weeds at the exact application rate that the specific product that you use tells you to spray at for your grass top and the weed top. Also try not to spray when the grass itself is not under stress, so that means not too hot, not too cold, uh, no, not during droughts, uh, you know, just generally think not in any times where you know that the grass is under stress. So if it's got a disease or some kind of fungus issue that you're trying to fix up or you've just sculpted it, not then is what I'm talking about. And then three days after you've done your actual spray, that's when you can water again, mow again, and then you fertilize using a fast release short-lived high nitrogen fertilizer to boost the grass up and out of that stressful state the weeds will continue to die over the next few weeks if you didn't put down or you don't have access to something quick release and short-lived you can have done a uh, uh, let's say like a granular high nitrogen fertilizer a week or two before even doing this process so that the grass is really actively growing uh, that will help the grass stay nice and strong and it will be able to grow out of the stressful issue that it's in. So what it means is that three days from now I will mow for the first time, I will water the grass for the first time and then I will put down some Vumacal mag to boost it up and out of the state. Now a big top tip is try and get yourself a wetting agent. Sometimes you can get yourself wetters and spreaders over the counter uh, sometimes you can get products that are designed to be stickers. Uh, I don't advise using those until you really know what you're doing with herbicides because you can seriously mess up your lawn if you use stickers. So just get a wetter or a spreader and this just improves the spreading of the product itself. It helps mix better in the tank. Uh, on top of that, it helps you see where you sprayed because it makes like a shiny look on the grass and that's great. And on top of that, it helps prevent the product from sticking to the inside of your tank. So not only is it about spreading, 
and not only is it about how it's going to hit the ground or the the, uh, the leaf of the plant and stick to the plant and improve the efficacy of the product it's also going to make your life easy by you being able to see it and it's also going to make your life easy for future uses with the same tank because you're able to rinse the poison out of the tank better so that you can reuse it for other things later on it doesn't always work i actually advise separate tanks for everything so a separate tank for fertilizer a separate tank for pesticides a separate tank for selective herbicides and a separate tank for non-selective herbicides really that is what i advise now there's one more thing that i haven't brought up in this video and i mean it's been covered on many other people's videos but let's just bring it up now quickly in a, in a very short and maybe not descriptive enough descriptive enough fashion and that is that you actually have to measure the length and breadth of your area so x number of meters times x number of meters and that gives you surface area the surface area tells you how much product you're actually going to have to mix up in the first place and then you go and figure out in the products instruction manuals the application rate and it will tell you something along the lines of 30 moles of this product must, must be mixed with 4 liters of water per 100 square meters and if we pretend then for the sake of uh, this video that you had a 200 square meter yard then in that circumstance it would be 60 moles of product mixed with 8 liters of water and that will cover 200 square meters and then what you do so if you figure that little portion out of it by reading the instructions first you then take your spray tank fill it up with only water the exact let's say it was that eight liters and you go to your 200 square meter section of lawn and you walk pressurize the tank excuse the wind you pressurize the tank you open the sprayer set the nozzles so that it's giving you the, a nice fine mist that's not too light that it just blows away for nothing and also not too heavy that it's big droplets it must be a you've got to try and sort of guesstimate that kind of figure there is a correct way of doing it but th that's the adjust of it it mustn't be so light that it blows away and takes you six hours to cover the area and it also mustn't be too heavy that it's like raindrops falling on the grass and you basically pace up and down and you see how long it takes you to finish that eight liters of water that is in your tank and if you haven't covered your entire yard you've walked too slowly and if you had to walk 37 times you've walked too fast you do it at least an up and down and a back and forth action and that should give you a pretty good coverage for sorting out a broadcast application of weeds uh, or giving you the proper weed control and just remember this is weed control there's no such thing as weed eradication it doesn't exist unless you i mean lay concrete that's weed eradication Oh man, there's so many add-ons to this video. Uh, on top of that, when spraying, you've got to hold your wand, so the little stocky that you hold that has the little lever on it and then sprays at the end there's the little spritzy spout thing. That little spritzy spout thing needs to be about 50 centimeters off the ground. You need to hold it in that position, firing downward, slightly forward all the time, and you walk at a steady pace always while the pressure is about as regular or as, as um, let's say as pressurized as what you can keep it, as stable as what you can keep it. You don't sit there coloring in, spraying, and when you see extra weeds and you like wave the thing back and forth a million times because then you have severely over applied and it's not just that you're gonna kill the weed better, but you'll kill the grass better too. So don't do that. And that's it, just practice patience and perseverance because you're gonna have to reapply most products for, for, for weeds like Oxalis that drop seeds that can really easily germinate and spread via creeper. You have to reapply basically every month for a couple of months. You've got to break its cycle, almost like what you need to do with certain pests. Uh, once you've done that, you should be mostly okay. And remember, if you're the guy that's got the lawn full of weeds, it's still the cheapest thing for you to do to try and recover, if you've still got some grass, of course. It still is by far the cheapest thing to go buy a bottle of decent herbicide and spray out your lawn in the way that I've just told you to do now um, as opposed to trying to let's say for example dig all of it out because that's really where people make big big mistakes is that they've got a lawn full of weeds they go and they call a company and spend 30 grand on getting turf replaced and then what happens is the turf company comes in and they just rough up the surface of your grass full of weeds they plant the sod straight on top of it again and a year later you've got the exact same issues that you already had it is best to control those weeds spray it out then you're gonna cost you 100 or 150 bucks for a bottle of herbicide, the correct stuff, spray it the correct way, get rid of that mess, and you'll be in a much happier 
place because of it. Remember, lawn, uh, lawn care is supposed to be an enjoyable thing. If there's something like this that's annoying you, nip it in the bud, tackle it, get rid of it, deal with it. That first one is always the worst one. After that, you should be just doing spot checks later on. Don't break down and start crying when you see more weeds. It will literally be something that's going to continue forever and ever. Oh man, that is it. Just take it. Deal with it. <laughs> anyway, more than enough information. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.